Does the, w would you say that dental implant patients are the happiest, the most satisfied? Well, I think so, because a lot of dentistry in the past is reparative. You know, if you have a tooth that's okay, it's functioning, and the dentist says you need a crown or the, you need you a filling. You patch it up, kind you of. You patch it up. So the analogy is you have a car that you bring to the shop, it needs a repair, you get your car fixed, it's the same car you had before. But imagine if all you ever did was take the bus, and now suddenly someone gives you a new car and you can drive it wherever you want. Well, that's a big difference. All right. A denture patient, someone who's in a denture is functioning at such a low level, or someone who has teeth that have to come out is facing such a traumatic life event that if you can give them back their teeth, you know, you're taking them from the bus to the car, and it's a whole new world to them. And I think what I've noticed in a lot of those patients is that the changes to their life are gradual. Um, it's not overnight that they stop socializing. It's not overnight that they start limiting their diet. It's not overnight that they stop smiling for photographs when they lose their teeth. It's a gradual thing. But when you replace the teeth with dental implants, it's so immediate that they notice the change, and the change is very dramatic. So they forget what it was like to, to chew, to bite into a steak, things like that. They most definitely do. And then you, you put the implants in, you know, the bridge goes on, you give them an apple, and they can't believe, they say, you, know, you, say, you want me to bite this down? I say, sure, bite the How apple. How soon after it's all done can, you, can they eat? Well, these hard foods. It depends on the case. You know, more and more now we're doing what's called immediate load implants. We can take someone who either has a denture or has, has to lose all their teeth, and in one visit we take out the teeth, we put the implants in, we put a temporary bridge on right away. So they... They can eat immediately? They can eat immediately. Does it hurt? It seems like a very painful procedure as well. You know, you would think, you would think so. Most patients after surgery just take Motrin or Tylenol. They take very little, uh, little in terms of pain medication. Okay, now let's start with the person that loses just one tooth. Okay, what does traditional dentistry have to offer and why a dental implant? And then we'll move to the people that I guess are missing several teeth and then the denture wear, et cetera. Well, when someone loses a single tooth, the traditional uh, choices that they had were not to replace the tooth at all, to replace the tooth with something removable, a partial denture with clasps, or to prepare the teeth on either side for a three-tooth bridge. What do you mean bridge. prepare them? Well, in dentistry, when we talk about preparing a tooth, what we do is grind down the teeth on either side into posts take an impression, and then make a bridge that cements on those two adjacent teeth. But that has some problems associated with it. First, when you grind down the adjacent teeth, it's in, it injures those teeth, and they're never quite as good as they were before. Many times, a bridge gets decay under it. People can't floss well around the bridge. Even a well-made bridge traps bacteria. Are these people headed for more tooth loss? Well, I mean, does it all start with one, obviously? It all starts with one. Uh, studies show that the average tooth-supported bridge lasts five to eight years. And when that bridge needs to be redone, roughly one-third of the time, one of the teeth that that bridge is holding onto can no longer be used. It's been destroyed from decay or because the nerve died or something. So then a three-tooth bridge becomes a four-tooth bridge, and it just keeps getting you know, bigger and bigger. Another type of patient we see is someone who has had a lot of restorative dentistry in the past. Typical patient maybe in their 40s or 50s. They had fillings when they were kids, and then they had crowns, and then teeth were lost, and now they have bridges. And now uh, they have a compromised teeth. They have a mouth where a lot of the crowns have to be redone. Maybe they have periodontal disease, so the support of the teeth is compromised. Well, if they do have bad gums, and I hear this, you know, I, I know someone that says, you know, my gums are terrible. I'm probably not a candidate for dental implants. Yeah, that's a very common misconception that we hear. Gum disease is a disease that attacks the ligament that holds the tooth to the bone. So when someone gets gum disease, the ligament is attacked, the bone is destroyed, and eventually the tooth become loose and fall out. The beauty of dental implants is that there is no ligament. The bone is fused directly with the implant. Are you actually cleaning it up, cleaning up that gum problem or whatever? Yes, because gum disease is a tooth-related disease. So when the tooth is gone, the gum disease is resolved. So when we put a dental implant in, the implant fuses directly with the bone, and it can't get periodontitis. So it how can't does get gum it stay disease. in the bone, though? It well, goes in the bone, what's going on? That's a great question. Initially, when we put the implant in the bone, there are threads on the implant, and the threads stabilize it. But then over the next several weeks, uh, the magic of osseointegration occurs. And what that is, is it's the, it's the bone fusing with the implant. Think about if you broke your arm. The, bone, the two halves of the bone would knit together and become one. Well, in effect, the bone knits together with the implant, and it becomes one. So who benefits the most uh, with dental implants? Well, I think anybody who's losing or has to lose a tooth will benefit from dental implants, but I don't think anybody benefits as much as the denture patient. Denture, okay. And the reason is that I, I call them denture sufferers because a denture patient uh, has lost their teeth. It's like losing your legs and having fake legs. You get by, but it really doesn't feel like your old legs again. So denture patients typically can't enjoy the foods they used to enjoy. The top denture covers the palate so they can't taste their food. Interesting. Yep. The bottom denture moves around, so when they eat, they have to use adhesive, which tastes bad, or they have to limit the foods. 
They're afraid if they sneeze or they laugh, is the denture going to drop Our down? Denture Are denture wearers, for the see? most part, all unhappy? Because see, I, I know a few denture, wear, denture wearers. They don't complain to me. I don't hear them complain. But is this something that, I guess... Well, you know what? They're probably not all unhappy, but I think a lot of people tend not to complain, and I think a lot of people are embarrassed about their dentures. The ones that aren't complaining, do you think that maybe they don't know what they're missing? They forgot what it was like to have their teeth? I think they've certainly, they've definitely forgotten what it's like to have their teeth again. You know, people really adapt. We're very malleable, um, and people make the best of a bad situation. Uh, but if you can take someone who doesn't have teeth and give them back teeth again, uh, it feels tremendous. It, it, it makes them feel like they, it is when they were young. Let me show you something. <coughs> When someone has all their teeth, uh, this is kind of what their jawbone would look like. And then as time goes on- These are all jaw bones. These are all jaw okay. bones in varying stages of resorption. Meaning after someone loses their teeth, the jaw bone starts to melt away. Why? Because the purpose of that jaw bone is to hold the teeth. So once the teeth are gone, the bone isn't stimulated. So how does a dental implant, I, I guess, preserve that bone? What a dental implant does is it stimulates the bone the same way that a natural tooth would, so it stops the bone resorption. And the reason that's important is By this. By the pressure? You mean the pressure, just, just the fact that it's in there? It's the pre yes, it's the stimulus, it's the pressure of the implant on the bone. The, okay. sa the same way uh, if, a woman ha if someone has osteoporosis and they exercise, that exercise strengthens their bones. The, the stress that an implant puts in the bone causes that bone to remain full and not melt away. Got it. A lot of denture patients can't wear their denture because as the bone resorbs more and more, eventually they have this pencil-thin lower jaw and the, the, the denture will actually press on the nerve and irritate the nerve. So a lot of people, once they've lost a lot of bone, don't even wear their so denture at all anymore. So when they get to this point, it's too late for dental implants. See, that's the beauty of it. It's almost never too late for dental implants. Even when someone is at this resort point, we can usually put in a couple of dental implants here to take the pressure off the nerve and to secure the implants. Do you add bone? I mean, do you have bone building material that you add? Do you take it from their hip? What well, do you do? You know, that's the beauty of how things have changed. Nowadays, we don't have to take it from the hip. So we can take someone who's had a lot of bone resorption and using uh, bone from a bottle, bone from a jar, uh, rebuild their jaw bones. So we don't have to go to the hip or use a source in the mouth. We can only have, we can have one surgical site and rebuild the bone. You know, another thing that happens as you lose bone is that your appearance starts to change. And the reason that is, is that it's really our skeleton, it's our bone that keeps the soft tissue plumped out where it should be. So as someone starts to lose bone in the upper jaw and the lower jaw, what happens is the lip starts to turn in. So the denture wear gets kind of a sunken look. Gets a sunken in look, the lips turn in, the creases between the nose and the mouth get deeper, the creases over here get deeper. <clears throat> and the dentist tries to compensate for that by making the denture thicker and thicker. So eventually you have a very thick denture and the denture becomes less and less stable because the artificial teeth on the denture are where the old teeth used to be in the patient's mouth. But that's no longer over the bone. So you have teeth out here, bone back here, and the denture becomes unstable. So when people have to start wearing more and more of the adhesive or get it relined, et cetera, that, that's because they're losing bone. Exactly. The, the loss of bone doesn't stop. So as long as they keep wearing their denture, they keep losing more bone. And that's why relines are necessary. But a reline is just trying to play catch up to, to the bone resorption.